Okay, 4.3, solving quadratic Pythagorean. So, there's different methods of factoring. GCF, and it goes for any of them. Okay, so you can take this. Great common factor out of everything to try to make the easier, smaller number to deal with. Difference of two squares, and we have two terms. That's the check for trinomials, which is three terms. Don't forget, I do have a video on uh, applying for a process for factoring trinomials. Grouping, because we have four terms, and a sum of two squares, two terms. We'll get back to that later. Okay, so x squared minus 3x minus 28. So we're going to break down to x times x. And we use two numbers that multiply to give you 28. Different by 3. 5 into 7 is 4. I want more negatives than positives, so that becomes negative, that becomes positive. Here, I have perfect square, perfect square, perfect square, and that's the difference for two squares. So you take the square root of the first term, square root of the variable, oops, put it there, square root of the second term, 1 plus 1 minus u dot. Now, when we factor, we create a product. If we have an equation, then we have to send each of them equal to 0 to solve. So in this case, we already have a factor, so we're just going to do both of these equal to 0. So we have negative 3 for an answer and positive 5 for an answer. Here we have the factor. X and X. We need two numbers to give us three. We need nine. That add up to six. And we want them both to be negative. <coughs> so now we don't have to do it twice. Now, notice let's go a little bit different. Let's go over our steps. We want these to be equation equal to zero, which this one is not. So to do that, we need to move this 10 over here. 6x squared plus 11x minus 10 equals zero. Now at this point, we can continue with what we've been doing. Factoring, set equals zero, and solve. Uh, here's where a method might come in handy because it's going to be a little while to guess and check. Um, otherwise, if you're guessing and checking, you need multiple to 6, or factor to 6, and multiple to 10. And you just got to guess and check and see what works best. So, I'm guessing and checking. And I'm looking for 11. So that's 12, that's 5. So you do 12 minus 5, I don't get 11. What if I do 5 and 2? Well, that's not going to work, and that gives me 30 and 2. That's not going to work either. This is where pencil comes in handy. I can try 1 and 10, but that's going to give me 10 and 6. That doesn't work. And I put the 10 in the first parenthesis, this would give me 60. So that's definitely not going to work. So I don't think it's 1 and 6. So let's try 2x and 3x. And I'm going to try 5 and 2. Well, this gives me 15. And this gives me 4. 15 minus 4 is 11. I want four positives, so I get that from right here right there. And now I said each equal to zero. 2x plus 5 equals zero. And 
3x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 divided by 3, x is 2 thirds. Uh, subtract 5, divide by 2. x equals negative 5 halves. And there are my two answers. 5 with 2 thirds and negative 5 halves. So, I'm going to move the 49 over and look what I have. Perfect square, perfect square, perfect square. Square root of the first number, square root of the next term, the second number, 1 plus, 1 minus, still equals 0. So 3x plus 7 equals 0, 3x minus 7 equals 0. I subtract, so x is going to be equal to, subtract 7, divide by 3. x is equal to, add 7, divide by 3. And there's my two answers. Well, this is a little bit different. This is a sum of two squares. Now, if this was minus 25, this would be very easy. It would be 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5. That's set of both equal to 0. But in this case, we have a plus. So let's look what it would look like anyway. If it was just normal. The minus. It's plus 5, minus 5. Well, here's the nice little trick here. All we need to do here is add 9. Because what's going to happen is if you multiply these out, the middle term is still going to drop out just like before. But look what happens if you do 5i times negative 5i. You get negative. 25i squared. Well, what did we just learn? i squared is negative 1. So negative 25 times negative 1 is our positive 25. So when we have a difference of two square, I'm sorry, a sum of two squares, we do the same thing as with the difference of two squares, except we add an i to each of these second terms. And it works out. So now we have these two, we're just going to set them both equal to 0. 2x plus 5i equals 0, and 2x minus 5i equals 0. Then we move the 5i over. So x equals negative 5i over 2, or negative 5 times i. And this one, x equals 5i over 2, because you're going to add 5i both times, or 5 times i. Right, you wish to do like that. And then this one right here, 10x squared equals 20x. In this case, you want to move the 20x over to make negative 20x. Now we're going to factor out the GCF. What can we pull out of both these? We pull out 10x times x minus 2 equals 0. Now, even though they're not both in parentheses, if this tells you all they don't know what to do with this number of this variable out here, put it in parentheses. Hopefully, it will remind you that you just do this. Now, in this case, any multiplication problem out here is just going to end up being zero, but it is one of our answers. And then add two both sides, x equals two. And there are your notes.